going to see about those lights. Let's, uh, let's turn some of these lights off. Wait, have we got one more light? Yeah, one more light. Oh, there we go. There we go. Let's spin it round. Look at that. Okay, hi guys and welcome to the show. You join me here at Gentry HQ or the Watchtower as some of you started calling it. I do like both of those names. I'm, I can't decide which. Uh, so I tell you what, let's, let's have a vote in the comments. Let me know which one you like more and then whichever gets the most nods, I will, I will christen the, 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 the new studio, the new space, uh, that particular name. Uh, so yeah votes in the comments please uh, now my wristwatch check is yes i've bought another tudor uh, rather predictably now i'll get into this in just a moment now you notice i am shooting at night unfortunately bit of a disaster today i i shot a video earlier and i'm still having problems with the sound i'm gonna try and get it sorted as soon as I can it's unfortunately I don't have control over the air conditioning you'll probably hear a, a whirring sound in the background also I can't stand lavaliers the last time I, I used the lavalier mic was in 2006 uh, my my forte if you haven't noticed is more editing uh, I can't stand recording it's just not my thing. And actually, I must admit, editing the, the, the intros and the videos has really been quite enjoyable. It's an aspect of the channel I really do enjoy. Um, very time consuming, but rewarding. Going from editing in Pro Tools and uh, tracks of audio to visuals in Final Cut is, it's not that big of a jump if you think about it. It's still dealing with structure and sequencing. Kind of um, translates in a, in a weird way. Anyway, I'm not, <laughs> what am I talking about? Uh, the other thing is you notice the Lacoste shirts are away. They're folded neatly uh, for next spring and summer. If you have been following the channel for uh, the last few years, you notice in winter and autumn, I changed to my long sleeve Brooks Brothers my cashmere and wool blend shirts, um, I just adore them. They're very soft and I, I really love this time of year. And before you know it, I'll be in the turtlenecks and the, <laughs> the tweed jackets and the sports jackets and all the rest of it. Um, that is my favorite season. But anyway, we're not quite there yet. I, I had to wear my Harrington jacket today. Why am I talking about sartorial stuff? Let's get back to watches, let's get back to watches. In a moment, we'll discuss my little 50 Fathoms mod. It is back. I had this done or remodded by uh, Watchmakers 4 and Watchmakers 4 is not based in the UK. I got that wrong in a previous video. He is actually USA based. If you remember, I haven't got it here, but he did mod my uh, King Panther or the, uh, the SKX that I had modded. Um, so, Basically, a little bit of backstory. Uh, what happened was I found a mod, a very affordable modded version of this watch on eBay. It wasn't done very well, so I've sent it off to Jeff, my good friend Jeff. He's completely reworked it, and I should have gone to him in the first place. I don't know why I was dealing with people I've, I've never had dealt with with before. Guys, do check out Jeff's work. He is an absolute professional. He has invested thousands into his equipment. I mean, we were discussing his machine that tests the pressure, uh, the depth rating of your watch, and you know, they're not cheap. They cost thousands of dollars. He's a seasoned pro, and his work, his portfolio work, you can see on Instagram, is very impressive. And what I love about modding Seikos like this this is, it used to be a Seiko 5, but yet now, you know, I've upgraded the movement, I've added domed sapphire, a, a, a bezel insert that looms up. It's just astounding. You will see it in a moment. We'll, we'll, we'll change perspectives and we'll have a closer look. 
anyway, I'm I'm getting off <laughs> off on a tangent again. Sorry, I get I get very excited when I talk about watches. What was I saying? Yes. So Jeff at Watchmakers Four, he is the absolute business when it comes to modding your watch. And what is wonderful is you get the watch you really want. You can specify the colors and, and really customize it. It's like a bespoke tailoring, you know, you can really express yourself, it reflects your personality, your tastes. Uh, so I really had fun with this and I am absolutely chuffed to bits as my experience with eBay illustrates perfectly. You want to spend a little bit more and go with somebody reputable, somebody experienced that is going to do a professional you know, a really meticulous work. It's worth it, it is worth it. We'll get onto that in just a moment. So let's talk about my Tudor because I'm also excited about that. Uh, that's why I'm a little bit hyped, but I do apologize. I'm, I am actually quite tired, I've been, <laughs> been work, I had a long day. Um, but yeah, the Tudor is back. You guys know I had the little Tudor Henry. I love that watch, I had that for a year. It was a rather unusual earlier version of this. This is a later version. This is the reference 76200. The same ETA 2834 in it. Day date, obviously, as the name suggests. We've got the sapphire glass. It's stainless steel, of course. It's a lovely 10 millimeters thick, just perfect, really slides under the cuff. And I've got to say, my wife is already eyeing it, so uh, that's a good sign. This time, however, it's the last generation before Tudor introduced the Glamour. Now, the Glamour is the current day-day offering from Tudor. The design is slightly different. It feels more its own thing. This very much feels like the Rolex equivalent. This is a 36 millimeter case instead of the 35, which is great because finding the replacement crystal is gonna be a heck of a lot easier. That was one of my big issues with my previous, the Henry. I love the Henry, I had it for over a year, I really enjoyed it, but I started getting a little bit trepidatious about wearing it so much because of that, uh, the plastic crystal there, the acry uh, acrylic, sorry. Because of that unusual size, I couldn't put a Jubilee. I did actually at one point buy a two-tone Jubilee. It wasn't compatible, it really broke my heart. I got a thing for Jubilee bracelets. I know they're flimsy, they're dated. Well, actually the new ones are, are really impressive. Uh, but I love the flimsy 80s, 90s uh, Jubilee bracelets. I've just got, I, I think I'm an 80s baby. You know, there's something about them. Don't touch the watch. I'm gonna put the Jubilee bracelet that I bought for my GMT Rolex, the Rolex GMT Master II, sorry. Uh, the Hoffman, the Hoffman. Also, you can put an Oyster, uh, an Oyster bracelet on it, no problem. This time I've gone with Smooth Bezel. It's got a sunburst silver dial, which is very much more understated, but yet still has a little, little bit of pizzazz to it. Uh, it's it, the way it plays with the light. It's got baton markers. I was considering a California dial, although um, even though they're a bit of a oddity and, and an acquired taste, the loom are killer on the California dials. However, because they are quite rare, the price is rather high on those. This I got for an absolute bargain. I think it's a 2005. We have the Oyster case, of course, 100 meters water resistance, the screw down crown. This time it's the Tudor logo, not the Rolex signed crown as before. Putting a Rolex bracelet on this is no problem uh, because you can. Uh, Tudor obviously being the younger brother, so to speak, of, of Rolex, it's perfectly acceptable. Uh, and the day day, it's a great complication. I have rarely missed it. I'm always forget what day it is. So it's very handy for every day. I feel the smooth bezel is a little bit more modern. It's a, it's a very clean look. And the polishing is just done exquisitely. I don't think I'm actually gonna review this because there's not really no point. You know, I've gone over these, uh, the, the, the Tudors, the, the Prince dates and the day dates. Well, actually, technically it's a date day. The Tudor reversed it to differentiate it from Rolex, so it's, um, yeah, look very subtle, but I like that. And usually for a mid-2000 piece, we still get the drilled lug holes. So uh, it's going to be a strap monster, although, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it on a Jubilee, as I said. Uh, so it, I do like that. I love drilled lug holes. Something you attribute to more Thule watches. For a strap monster like this, 
you know, outstanding. So it's automatic, obviously, as we discussed, you know, the ETA in there. So you've got that reliability, you've got that dependable, easy to service, affordable to service. But at the same time, you get some of that Rolex expertise in the quality. It's gorgeous. I love it. I'm, I'm very, very happy. It, it felt weird not having a shoot in the, in the collection. I'm a big fan of that dynasty. I, as a kid growing up in uh, South London, uh, in South London, I used to go to Hampton Court Palace all the time, uh, especially on the weekends. Uh, not to stay, I mean, I'm not, <laughs> that would be really cool, but uh, no, I used to visit a great attraction. They have a beautiful astrological clock. I think it's a treasure of horology. And guys, do visit it. I, I urge you to visit if you're ever in London, it's beautiful. Hans Wildorf was a big Anglophile and he named the brand in honour of the royal uh, British dynasty, the Tudors. It's close to my heart, I, I love that. It's a little bit of home, it's a little bit of nod to my childhood growing up there and so it's special to me and, and the name means something. Unfortunately we don't have the Tudor Rose, well we didn't on, on my previous day day. The name is there, Tudor me, to me may, means the same thing. So anyway, let's move on now to my 55 Fathoms, uh, the little Blampin Cheeky homage, um, yeah, it is. I love that Dala Domed Crystal and the, oh, the way it catches the light and, oh, it's gorgeous. It is gorgeous. And the loom is to die for. You know what, let's, before I rabbit on about it, uh, let's change perspectives and have a closer look at this. And also a couple more Seikos that I've got my, uh, my, greedy mitts on. Without further ado, let's change perspectives and have a closer look. As you can see, we have a whole plethora of Seikos before you. Uh, we're not just some vintage pieces lent in by my good friend Greg. Actually, he lent in his prospects uh, Paddy as well. But we also have uh, my before and after mod of the SNZH. Uh, this actually belongs to Alfredo. He won it in the prize. I'm about to send it off to him. So shout out to him. We also have, as you can see in the corner over there, just just patiently waiting, This <laughs> the rose gold stunner over there. That is an Astron Seiko that um, Seiko USA themselves have been uh, very kind enough to lend in. And quick shout out to Rohit. Uh, I do ho hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. I'm going to be sending you uh, the little SNK here that I recently reviewed as a prize. And in the box over there, if you could just see the logo, you can you can make out the fantastic new branding for Watchmakers 4, who did, where is it? There it is, my Seiko King Panther there. They are my watch modders of, modders, that's not even a word. <laughs> they are my watchmaker um, Seiko specialist of choice. Anyway, let's start with a vintage stunner. Let's just move the prospects out of the way. This actually, while we're talking of prospects, um, just look at this beast, huge thing. My God, look at that. Uh, so what is the reference of this special edition? This I believe is the SUN035, a very imp impressive kinetic powered Seiko Diver, I mean, just look at this thing, it's overbuilt. <laughs> oh, it does have uh, um, drilled lug holes, of course. I mean, it weighs an absolute ton, it is a monster. Look, look at the case, look at the dial, I mean, it just, look at those uh, applied um, markers. Very three-dimensional look, and that blue as well. Very, very cool watch indeed. Anyway, I'm not reviewing this. Greg just lent it in just as he's selling it. He finds it too big. It's very understandable. If I have time, I might do a review, although I'm a little bit overwhelmed, especially with the Astron that's just arrived. But it's cool to get my hands on it. And yeah, it's a beast. I, I <laughs> Look at that. It's almost... Wow, that case is impressive, though. Yeah, just thought I would share that. But let's put that to one side. We'll put it next to old Shin. Shin is here. If you're familiar with, this is Rupert, by the way, 
uh, from Shin Godzilla. If you haven't seen Shin Godzilla, have a look because the famous Hattori clock tower gets destroyed during his rampage. Wonderful scene. I'll be talking about it in Watches with Movies Part 3, so stay tuned for that. <laughs> Anyway, Greg did send in this incredible vintage Seiko from 1959. Now this was, I believe, uh, his uncle's. He bought it in 59. Uh, he didn't wear it apparently until 1965. It's a Japanese made. It's uh, got the old school Seiko there. It's the Seiko Kronos. Uh, no date, very delicate, incredibly thin. It's a manual wind. It's a wonderful action to it. It's Put it on this beautiful um i guess it, it's like a snake skin what is really charming about this piece is if you have a look at the back it's um signed in japanese and english very very cool so it's a uh, 14 karat gold filled as you can see there on the front with a um, stainless steel case back snap back it's a tiny little 35 millimeter piece but wears wonderfully the lugs really give it a good positioning with the uh, actually drilled lug holes as well which is pretty cool because it i would imagine this is a strap monster but you can even see a little s on the crown adorable really nice so apparently from 1965 he wore it for 25 years no no sorry 28 years solidly serviced i think in 2014 if i recall correctly as shin is here uh, if you remember the original godzilla the black and white original came out in 54 so the um, just to give you an idea how old this watch is quite incredible very very classy little vintage completely original uh sacred chronos i i would imagine this this would be worth quite a fair amount look at the applied batons the curvature of that crystal in the case it is gorgeous anyway thank you greg for sending such a special watch in it's been a pleasure uh, you know i've i've been wearing it sparingly because it's so special i i almost scared to to wear it but gorgeous absolutely gorgeous so let's move on now to my 55 fathoms mod it's in the box here actually you know what let's just clear some of these watches out of the way then they come in this really cool case that i'm going to be definitely using for my travels very nice um I just included an extra buckle, very cool. And there it is, there it is. Wow, look at that, look at that. It's a beast, glistening away. So it went from this, and that's in the middle of a date change, <laughs> to, to this, quite incredible, look at that. Quite incredible, a lot of work has gone into it. Actually, you know what? Let's bring in the list. So I've listed it all down so you can get an idea of the costs and what's been done. So let me just get my my little Japanese uh, pencil. So first of all, the watch, the, the, base, the base watch is the SNZH57, which is what you see here. They go for about $170 now. I have reviewed it, have a look back if you wanna get the full spec and all the rest of it. Now, Jeff removed the folded end link rash, which I believe would have been here. If we turn around the watch, we can see the movement. So I've had the movement upgraded. Uh, it, it did have 7S36. Now I've upgraded it to the 4R36. As you guys know, it's, I love that movement. It has hacking, manual wind, a longer power reserve. Uh, it beats at the same speed at 21,600. So this is a newer Seiko movement. I believe it was introduced in 2011. It has the 41 hour power reserve. As you can see there, it's a 24 joule movement. So the upgrade was 60. $8. Now he's uh, also included a screw down crown. Um, oh, and the threading. Fantastic. So if you pop out the crown, um, oh, we've got manual wind. Fantastic. Um, and there she goes. There she goes. So I'll pull it out all the way. And as you can see, it's hackable. Yeah, I, I rate this movement highly. It's, um, it's truly a, a rugged workhorse of a movement. Although I, I, you know, I despise that cliche of a, of a word. 
and we're joined by the NYPD. <laughs> and of course, it has got quick set. Now, you'll notice there is the date uh, tucked away there. We'll, we'll get to the date in a moment. So where's my pencil? Screwed Iron Crown was, I believe, 35. And then, of course, there's the dial, which has... Uh, beautiful C3 Luminova. I'll include a loom shot. The loom is not just the dial. We have loom in the bezel insert as well, which I've also upgraded. The insert is a little bit more costly because it's sapphire, which is great because it's scratch resistant. It has that kind of Baker-like look of mid-century divers. And I feel it just completes it, it really does. The date window was also changed. I believe there's a beveled date window, so let's let's go in really close and have a look. And you can just see it there, tucked away at the 430 position. Now, uh, he's also added a polished chapter ring, which is on the inside. So a little bit like the Squirely 1521, I love it. Adds a, a nautical feel to it. It reflects the, the markers and, and definitely gives a little bit of depth. And as you can see, we have the reloomed hands. These are the Blancpain style hands. Second hands has the lovely arrow tip, but these are, they're not, they're almost cathedral shaped, but they're very particular. I love how they have the little point at the end and the length of them is just perfect. The numerals on the dial, it just works flawlessly. I love the balance and, and the date is not too obstructive to, to that symmetry. Printing is fantastic and we have automatic written there. Oh, look, look at it. It's it's almost the sunburst effect, but not quite. It's, it's still matte. Um, lovely. I love that inner ring. Just frames it beautifully. It, also, if you notice, the loom is a kind of cream. It's not a, like a strong faux patina. It has a... Um, actually, it does remind me of the Seamaster, the um, aged tritium patina. Very, very cool indeed now the hands cost i think about 56 for the handset uh, and if we have a look at the back where is it debranded exhibition case back so he's taken away the if i if i show you the the other one here it says there seiko sorry you can't really there you go seiko there so he's removed that and i think it just you know it, it, it it's less distracting to to admire that um, that movement. Look at look at it go, perfect, perfect. <laughs> what else? So and then he's added a sailcloth leather strap, which is just very luxurious. And and um, so it's it's a twenty two millimeter. I'm gonna have to double check on the price of the sailcloth. Uh, I I think I didn't think I I'm not sure if I included it here, but. Um, he's also added a little bonus. I guess this is a gift. Thank you very much, Jeff. Gosh, look at that. I really am spoiled today. Hirsch, Liberty. Very, very nice. This is, wow, look at that. Look at the stitching. Gorgeous. Thank you so much, Jeff. Lovely little gift. And then, of course, the black date wheel, as I showed you earlier. So it, it, it just matches the dial perfectly. Subtle, but definitely worth it. Oh, and I almost forgot. My God, the most mesmerizing feature, that double-domed sapphire crystal. Oh, look at that. Stunning. We have a blue AR coating on it. I love it. Amazing. Absolutely astounding. So the labor costs were 200. The total is 679. Definitely worth it. Uh, if you guys remember that I, I paid, I think, about $400 or around about that for a basic mod off eBay who, you know, really didn't know what he was doing and, and took weeks and weeks and I really was annoyed. There was gunk on the hands, just an amateur, amateur job. I went back to uh, Watchmakers 4. Jeff did my King Panther, as you see here, which I just adore. It's, it's the, my favorite SKX. Sorry, I don't know why the zoom, the zoom wants the zoom on, sorry, the zoom, the focus wants to focus on old Rupert there, but yeah, let's put my hand there. There we go. His work is just immaculate. And Jeff tests them, you know, he has all the professional equipment. He pressure tests them. Um, and actually, I've got to say, the screwed crown has now increased the water resistance. So it's not, it's it's <laughs> superior to the 100 meters that the standard um, SNZH. So that's pretty cool too. So I can take this in the water and not, 
not worry. Yeah, I'm over the moon. I mean, Jeff's work is exceptional. He is meticulous about every single detail. In fact, such an extent I have bought, where is it? Oh, it's here. I've bought a SKX 013. If you guys remember, I had an, another modded one. So I'm gonna have the hour hand from, from my mod taking off this. I'm gonna put it on this SKX 13. I'm gonna have the case um, seracoated like my 007 here. I might have the bezel insert change. I, I haven't decided. I'm gonna contact Jeff, get a quote, see how much uh, it's gonna cost. It's just a simple hand change and, and maybe... I, I'm gonna keep the movement at the 7S26. I'm, I'm perfectly happy with it. I just thought for this I might as well, you know, treat myself. Yeah, it's definitely worth it. What an incredible... <laughs> It's, it's taken this watch to a whole new level. It really has. Wonderful. And as you guys know, I, I love the blank pan, but sadly with my smaller wrists, this being a 41. And I've tried the blank pan on. I, I went to their store in Las Vegas, if you remember, and uh, it just broke my heart. The, the, the blank pan 50 Fathoms is far too big and also way out of my budget. So anyway, Jeff, thank you once again. If you guys are interested in having uh, your Seikos modded, I'll leave a link. Actually, I'll leave an email. Uh, contact Jeff. Tell him what you want to have done. He's very, very uh, professional. Yeah, you've done a, a sterling job. Absolutely outstanding. Pure class. I can't recommend Jeff's services enough. And uh, roll hit. Stay tuned. I will be sending you this in the post very soon. I'll, I'll email you shortly. Anyway, guys, I'm going to leave it there. Please don't forget to add your thoughts, queries, comments, opinions, all the rest of it down below. Thank you very, very much for watching. Please don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and found it useful. And as always, I will catch you in the next one. Okay, ciao.